When it comes to high performance, low cost, very high value, hi-fi components in 2021, several manufacturers spring to mind, none more so than SMSL. Now I have been reviewing their AO200, which SMSL call a Bluetooth digital amplifier. And I think it's offering a hell of a lot for its asking price of $275. And it seems for about the next week, there is a 13% discount with Oshida audio. So it's $242.73. That would be about £220 here in the UK with import duties. And I've got to say that is a ridiculous price for what you are getting here. And there has never been a better time to become an audiophile and get into high-end sound. Because I feel like with a product like the AO200, it would be you know perfect for a new starter. Because all you need to do is add some speakers. And if you add some good speakers, you're going to be in a really good place because its sound is really very good. But we'll talk about that in a second. But what is the AO200? Well, it's a balanced integrated amplifier with 50 watts at eight ohms of German Infineon Class D power, 90 watts at four ohms, and a healthy 150 watts into two ohms if your speakers are brutal. Infineon amplification is new to me. If it's German, it's got to be good, right? And looking at the SMSL website, it seems like it's a new form of Class D using MOSFETs in a clever way. The AO200 has a built-in DAC, which I couldn't find any specification for, but you can connect to it via USB and there is a cable included or via Bluetooth. And there is a cool little aerial that for some reason I just found charming, I just really liked it. And the AO200 supports Bluetooth 5.0 and the Bluetooth has been 100% reliable throughout this whole review. And I've actually found the Bluetooth performance to be really very good. Then there is the bonus of both RCA and balanced inputs. If you want to use an external DAC, although I do wonder if the internal DAC is fully bypassed, and there are two line level subwoofer outputs that have an automatic 200 Hertz roll off applied. I'm thinking that this is a great specification for the money, and SMSL are claiming some nice THD and other performance parameter numbers that might mean something to some of you. The consumer experience is nice too. The AO200 comes in nice packaging. Who really cares really? But I think it's a nice first impression touch. It's a very well made unit that feels reasonably heavy, but solid and well manufactured. The included remote control, even that feels well made. It's nice and really easy to use. The color display on the front, again, I really like it. The volume number is large enough to see at a reasonable distance. And the different images for the inputs seems quirky, but it helps you to be able to see what you have selected, even if you can't read the text, which I think is a nice idea. There is a menu system with some basic obvious options like tone controls and brightness and dimming options for the screen. There is an option to engage soft clipping which stops the amplifier distorting past its maximum power. And I think SMSL should probably rename this mode drunk and really cranking it. The big option for me is the EQ. There are eight options to choose from and what each one does you can see on the SMSL website, although good luck reading the graph. Overall, the AO200 is a very nicely thought out, very compact unit that's just nice. Even the power switch on the back feels nice. I can't see anyone really having any complaints about the AO200 for how it is, for how it's built, its operation. It's a very well thought out product, but what? does it sound like? I started the review using the AO200 to power the TAD Compact Evolution 1 speakers, which are around 19,000 pound speakers. Why? Because I had them set up and I wanted to put a few days playtime on the AO200 before things got serious. So I connected to it via Bluetooth and fired up some music from Cobus. And to be honest, I was not expecting much, but I was very pleasantly surprised by the sound quality. The sound stage was open and the sound was clean and clear. And so long as I kept the volume on my phone reasonable, I could crank the volume on the AO200 up to the maximum and the sound stayed clean and composed. It was a little less and tonally undersaturated for my taste, and I know some of this is my room's acoustics. So in the menu, I set the EQ to bass, and that was noticeably better. It created a more full and saturated sound, more to my taste. I tried Super Bass 2, and that saturated the sound even more, which was great, but it came at the expense of some bass composure, so I settled on bass as the best sound compromise. 
And I actually listened to this setup really quite a lot. And was it perfect? Of course not. But it was perfectly good enough to sit and enjoy listening to music, even for like a, you know, a crazy audio file like me. And I was impressed with the clean, controlled overall sound, which in a way, I suppose is typical Class D, but it wasn't dry and it wasn't hard or harsh or anything negative. It was just good, solid sounding music. And it was so good, I was tempted to do the whole review with the TAD CE1 because I just really like those speakers, but I thought it made more sense to change the speakers to something a little more appropriate. So I got my Wharfdale Evo 4.2s out. And I'm glad I did because it reminded me of just how good those speakers are. And I feel like this could be a great system recommendation, you know, for not crazy money. But obviously this was a step down in overall sound quality, but the same strengths of the AO200 were there. So a nice, clean, clear overall sound with a very open, nicely organized soundstage. SMSL have done a great job on the Bluetooth here. I wonder if they think that will be the preferred use case for customers. So they've paid real attention to the details to it, and I think it shows with the sound quality. But to fully test the AO200's credentials, I plugged it into my main review hi-fi system, using it purely as an integrated amplifier, feeding into it balanced. I run a full direct live calibration, so everything was the same as usual. And the sound definitely grew up some. There was now more overall solidity and scale, and I put the EQ back to direct as that now sounded best. And the AO200 behaved differently. It got louder much quicker, and it seemed to have a lower ceiling of power threshold. So I found it useful to lower my DAX output voltage so I could use more of the AO200's volume or power, and that seemed to give me the best overall results for the cleanest sound at louder volumes. And you know what? I think for a sub £300 or sub $300 amplifier, it does everything that you could ever want. There is very good timing. Again, that nice, open, and cleanly layered soundstage packed full of details. Vocals are presented with a nice amount of tonality, clean and clear, and in the main, stress-free. Treble details are smooth, with a medium amount of attack, and the bass is very tight and agile, with just about enough oomph to be satisfying, but a bit more oomph wouldn't have gone amiss. Overall, the AO200 controlled the Evo 4.2 speakers well, not perfectly, but very well again for the money, handling big bass music like Billie Eilish's new album with no problems. And it handled more lively and dynamic music, only really losing its composure on occasion when music was very intense and there was a hell of a lot going on. Being very critical, if you really push the volume, the sound would harden a bit, but that's common, and more expensive amplifiers will sound bigger, more substantial, more solid, and more refined, but you are going to pay for that. I think the AO200's clean, precise sound, mixed with a modicum of easygoing, especially from the internal DAC, is a very nicely balanced overall sound. And I wanted to try and compare it to a more traditional Class AB amplifier around the same money, but that is harder than it sounds. I looked at Cambridge Audio's integrated around 300 pounds, and none of them offered a balanced input or even an internal DAC with Bluetooth. And I thought of Audio Labs 6000A, but at £599, we are now into yeah, more than double the cost and still no balanced inputs. So I decided that I don't really need to compare the AO200 to other amplifiers around this kind of money. I feel because it's been performing so well and the specification it's got is really quite stand out. So I feel like I can sit here and confidently say after testing it with several speakers and speakers up to £19,000 that if you are new to Hi-Fi and you're looking at this as maybe your first product and you're thinking that $275, you know, normal price is a lot of money to spend and I fully understand why you might think that, well then I can say confidently that there's no real need to deliberate over this one. This is a, a very easy recommendation. This is a, you know, one that you can buy with confidence. In a similar situation maybe, but different if you're looking for a compact affordable unit, maybe for a bedroom system or, or a second system. Again, no need to procrastinate over this one. This is one that's easy to recommend and one you can buy with confidence because I think this is a great way to spend a few hundred bucks and I really can't see anyone picking one of these up and being disappointed. 
Is it perfect audibly? Of course not, but at the same time, its sound is very well managed in its delivery, so there are no obvious flaws or shortcomings that stand out, so long as you are realistic with your expectations for volume and bass quantity. But if you want more bass, add a subwoofer. That could be a great way to go. And I think it's great that if you're new to this hobby, that you can just connect to it really, really easily with your phone, and providing you know, you're using some decent speakers, you're gonna get some really good results over Bluetooth, which I think is you know fantastic. But I really like the fact that maybe down the line, if you want it to add maybe a better streamer to give yourself you know, more options or maybe an external DAC to give yourself you know, different or better sound quality, well then the AO200 can you know, go with you a little bit. It can grow with your system a little bit. And I really like that. I always really like that aspect about hi-fi products. And it's small enough to go on your desk or you could use it in your main system because it has enough power for both. And I think that is really cool. And you can tailor the sound with the EQ options. There's not many amplifiers, even that cost a lot more money, that offer anything like that. And it definitely sounds different using the EQ compared to the tone controls. I tried this, it definitely sounds different. So on that note, I want to end the review with a clap for SMSL because I think they have created a really great product here with the AO200 that sounds really good. It's offering a really nice kind of package and build quality overall package for a crazy good price, a price that almost seems too good to be true. But I think it's really just a marker of just how well developed the more affordable end of the hi-fi market is. And I think this is a great example of where, you know, modern technology is really coming good and really paying dividends for the hi-fi market and really I suppose for audio files. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up and obviously subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. Of course you have. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.